ultrasound imaging uses sound waves to create images of the human body. It is commonly used to visualise foetuses in the womb during pregnancy. This is called obstetric ultrasound. Sound is produced by the vibration of molecules within a medium, such as air or water. Sound travels through different mediums as waves of pressure and is characterised by its frequency, which is measured in units called hertz. We can hear sounds between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. The term ultrasound is used to describe sound waves with frequencies beyond human hearing, higher than 20,000 hertz. An ultrasound machine consists of a probe connected to a scanner unit which provides controls and displays the images. Inside the probe, there are quartz crystals called piezoelectric crystals. When an electric current is applied to these crystals, they change shape very rapidly. It is these rapid shape changes or vibrations which produce waves of ultrasound. The probe sends these ultrasound waves into the patient's body. At each boundary between different tissues or organs, some of the sound waves are reflected back to the probe, which records the position and strength of these echoes. The scanner unit combines this information to create an image of the boundaries of the different tissues and organs which the sound waves are being reflected from. The ultrasound machine calculates the depth of each boundary by measuring the time taken for each reflected wave to return. The deeper the layer, the longer it takes for each signal to return. Fluids, such as blood, urine or the amniotic fluid inside a woman's womb, do not reflect the sound waves and are generally seen as black in the image. In obstetric ultrasound, the amniotic fluid provides an acoustic window which allows the other tissues to be clearly displayed. Ultrasound probes come in different shapes and sizes depending on their use and the sonologist should choose the appropriate probe to explore the specific area of interest in the body. Different probes also produce different frequencies of ultrasound. Probes using higher frequency ultrasound produce a very precise image but are limited by the depth they are able to penetrate, while lower frequency probes allow for deeper penetration at the cost of a lower resolution image. The shape of the image displayed by the ultrasound machine depends on the arrangement of the piezoelectric crystals within the probe. For example, a probe with a flat face or footprint has a rectangular or linear image. The curved shape of the curvilinear transabdominal probe commonly used in obstetrics produces fan-shaped or sector image. The footprint from the transvaginal probe is also fan-shaped, but typically has a wider sector angle than the transabdominal curvilinear probe. The piezoelectric crystals within the probe are very fragile. The probe is the most delicate and expensive part of the machine and should always be handled with care and stored correctly when not in use. The cable connecting the probe to the imaging unit is also vulnerable to damage if not looked after. Ultrasound machines are able to record the movement of fluids within the body by making use of something called the Doppler effect. The frequency of a sound wave changes depending on whether something is moving towards or away from its source. This is known as the Doppler effect and is why the sound of an ambulance appears to get higher, its frequency increases as it comes towards you, and lower, its frequency decreases as it moves away from you. Ultrasound machines are able to record this shift in frequency to measure movement within the body. For example, to show the speed and direction of blood flow within an artery. 
This is most commonly shown with colour, where movement towards the probe is shown as red on the display and movement away from the probe as blue. In addition to colour Doppler, other common types of Doppler are pulsed wave Doppler and power Doppler. Ultrasound scanner units come in a wide range of shapes and sizes, but all have the same basic controls. Using these controls to produce a clear image with the scanner is called knobology. The power of acoustic output controls the strength of the signal produced by the probe. Overall gain controls how much the overall signal received by the probe is amplified, like turning up the volume on a stereo. The higher the gain, the brighter the overall image will be. Ultrasound signals decrease in strength the deeper they penetrate into tissue, meaning that the corresponding echo received by the scanner is also weaker. Uncorrected, this would result in the deeper parts of the image appearing darker than the superficial layers. To correct for this, the time gain control allows the sonographer to selectively increase or decrease the strength of signal received by applying different amounts of gain at different depths. The focus control allows you to produce a more detailed image of an area of interest by adjusting the focal point of the beam. The depth control defines the depth of visible area shown in the image. In order to optimise the image resolution, it is important to make sure that the depth selected matches the area of interest. The field of view controls the width of the image. The narrower the field of view, the better the resolution of the image. Some common situations can prevent the probe from receiving a clear signal and produce unclear or distorted areas in the image seen on the screen. These are known as artefacts. Different types of artefact can commonly occur. Their effect can be reduced by scanning with the probe in a different position. A reverberation artefact can happen when the ultrasound signal becomes trapped between two layers which act as reflectors, bouncing the signal between them. This results in the reverberation echo appearing to be a falsely deeper structure since the returning echo takes longer to return to the probe. Ultrasound has trouble penetrating very dense material, such as bone, which can reflect the majority of the signal back to the probe, leaving an area of darkness beneath it in the image. Side lobe artefacts can happen when the ultrasound signal is reflected back from tissue to one side of the main sound wave, causing incorrect information being displayed in the image. Although ultrasound sonography is a safe and effective imaging technique, it can cause harm if carried out incorrectly. The vibrations created by sound waves causes heat to build up in human tissue. The amount of heat being produced is calculated by the ultrasound machine and is called the thermal index, or TI. A small increase in temperature is acceptable but it is advisable to keep the TI below 1 wherever possible. Doppler sonography uses a pulsed signal which creates a lot of heat and has the highest TI. For this reason, Doppler should not be used in the first 12 weeks of pregnancy unless clinically indicated. In general, the higher the strength of the ultrasound signal, the higher the risk of causing damage to tissue. For this reason, the strength of the signal should always be as low as reasonably achievable, 
Alara, and the examination time should be kept as short as possible. The Alara Principle, as well as other safety statements adopted by the International Society for Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynaecology, can be found at this web address.